Um, I'm Jason Garrett. I work as a resilience advisor for um, World Vision UK. That's the World Vision logo, if you haven't seen it before. So what does a, a resilience advisor do? Well, I support projects in many countries around the world um, that are helping communities to address the impacts of disasters of various kinds and climate change and, and uh, similar kind of issues. I was going to say environmental degradation, but we were told earlier not to use the word environment, so I won't use that one. And so we're trying to reduce the negative impacts of those kind of events. Um, and so, yeah, I work for World Vision, which is um, a child-focused organisation. We work in, I think it's somewhere around kind of 75 different countries across Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East, um, with our overall aim to improve uh, child well-being. And, um, and obviously, as you can imagine, um, disasters, climate change, all those kind of things all have a negative impact on child well-being, um, whether that's the direct impact of maybe a child who um, doesn't have enough food to eat because of drought or um, gets injured or even killed in a flood, but also it, the impact those kind of events have on, on education systems, on health systems and all those other things, and particularly around livelihoods and their own families and communities' abilities to, um, to feed and care for uh, their children. So we do quite a lot of work with, um, with smallholder farmers um, who find that, that climate change is, is adding further challenges to the, to the kind of things they already face. Um, there was a phrase used earlier about a threat multiplier. So that's, that's what climate change does. When it's, and when it's added on top of uh, things like kind of poor soils, um, maybe a, a lack, of, lack of inputs, a lack of support, um, and things like droughts and floods, it all makes um, the situations that people are facing much harder. And um, there's kind of greater uncertainty. Um, we're often seeing longer periods of drought in many communities, but then also uh, more intense periods of rainfall. So you have both at the same time, or both following each other. You have drought, um, and because that goes on longer, there's drier, longer periods of dryness and, and, and higher temperatures, ground um, becomes drier and harder. So when the rain comes, and it comes much heavier than it used to, it washes away, it doesn't um, penetrate the soil. So both of those are causing problems and are, are kind of magnifying each other. So um, World Vision does various things to try and help with that, um, including promoting what we call climate smart agriculture, or sometimes conservation agriculture, various techniques and approaches um, that, that help to improve water retention in the soil, for example, um, increasing organic matter, improving soil fertility, so that, um, that the, maybe the little water that, that there is can be used more effectively, more efficiently, because it's, it's kept in the ground, um, it doesn't run off or it's not dried out of the ground um, through various techniques, um, so that people are better able to, um, to grow, grow food, um, and particularly, it's not necessarily around increasing food production necessarily, but what it is about is making that more consistent. Um, because you can have some approaches that might produce great yields in a good year, but almost nothing in a bad year. Whereas climate smart agriculture is more about trying to be consistent across all those different, um, uh, different conditions that people may face, um, so that they don't face you know, one particular good year, but then several years maybe when they can't um, produce as much. So alongside that, um, we also um, promote the restoration of forests and, and tree cover. Um, we, we use a particular technique that has the rather long-winded name of farmer-managed natural regeneration. Now, when people think of um, reforestation, often it's replant, uh, planting trees or seedlings, that kind of thing. And, um, and while that's, you know, a, in many ways a good idea, it is prone to large failure because there are, a, a seedling has very little roots and, and without, yeah, with the, uh, those roots can't get down to, to the water and the nutrients in the soil um, and so a lot of those trees don't actually become established. Whereas the approach we take, um, obviously this isn't necessarily applicable in, in every circumstance, but a lot of the time you work in places where trees have been cut down at the ground level, and the root system is still there. 
And what happens is, over time, little shoots um, spring up and a little bush kind of appears, and a, a farmer will cut that back because they often try and clear their land because of being told that you want to have um, clear land to grow your crops on. Whereas, in fact, in many of the places where we work, agroforestry is a much better technique. Um, and so we help to promote that by um, helping farmers with a technique where they, rather than cutting back all of that bush, you cut back all but two or three shoots, and then all the energy from the tree or from the roots goes into just those, that small number of shoots, so they grow back much more quickly. And then you continue to, to prune and, and coppice, I think is the technical term, so that trees actually can grow back remarkably quickly. This is a farmer I met in Uganda, and you can see that tree behind him. Two years before I took that photograph, there wasn't a tree there at all, it was just a stump. So that has grown back in two years. Um, because it has that underground forest, as we call it, that massive root system that's already there, you're not having to start from scratch. So, um, so yeah, we work with farmers to promoting um, that kind of technique. Um, to, to promote forestry and tree cover, because that has a, a, a very significant impact on agriculture as well. Um, we also, as well as working with individuals and communities, we work with national and local governments. Um, we're part of um, a consortium project called the Africa Climate Change Resilience Alliance, um, which works in Ethiopia, Mozambique and Uganda. Um, it's made up of NGOs, including Oxfam, Save the Children, Care, and World Vision, and also a research think tank, the Overseas Development Institute. Now, World Vision um, is the lead agency in Uganda for this, this particular project, and we've done a number of things in trying to work with local government to help them to build their capacity to, to, enable, to support communities in their districts to adapt to climate change. And one of the things we've done is to work with the National Meteorological Office in Uganda, as well as some of the local districts, um, to take the, the climate and weather information that they produce and, and turn it into something that is actually understandable for ordinary people and for smallholder farmers in particular. So that means turning it into something that is, is understandable because it's not too technical, but also translating it into local languages and then adding some advice on what to do as a result of, of those forecasts and that weather information, um, and to disseminate that in various ways from local national press, local radio, um, phone, SMS messages, that kind of thing, all in local languages so that people can understand it and can make use of it. Um, now, we've had um, quite a bit of success with that. Um, that's a picture of somebody who's been using that information. We started off as a small kind of pilot project working in about three districts covering about ten different languages. Um, but because we were working with the Met Office and with the district governments around this, it got picked up by other district governments who saw it as being um, a very good way of supporting local farmers. And now it's been translated, or it, the information is translated into 35 languages and I think half the districts in Uganda are using the model. So the, the little input that we were able to give, um, and I'm probably supposed to tell you that this was a British government, UK, DFID funded project, um, has now been spread and scaled up across half the country um, because of the value that the, the national government, uh, the Met Office and, and district governments saw. Um, so there's a few examples there of how um, we can work with local communities but also influence the policies of, of local and national government to, um, to, to help people address some of the global challenges that we've been discussing, and, and particularly around climate change and, and disasters as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.